I think when you grow up, you aspire to be Homer Simpson and work in a nuclear power plant. In order to do so, you'll need to know a little bit about nuclei. <clears throat> so we'll start by the Greeks, right? Thinking that it couldn't be cut. We're gonna get up an, an atom's grill at this point. Inside of the atom, you'll find a nucleus, and inside of that, you'll find a proton, which is a positive thing that hangs out in the nucleus. A neutron, which is a neutral thing that hangs out in the nucleus. And these two together make up a class of particles called nucleons, which are things that are in the nucleus. Outside of the nucleus, there's an electron, and you don't know where it is. Next up, this equation. Very, very simple. Mass number is the count of nucleons. Atomic number, Z, is the count of protons. Atomic number, if you change it, you will get a new element. That's what makes elements different from one another, the amount of positive charge that's in the nucleus. Wait, what if you change the number of electrons and you don't change the number of protons? Well, shoot, then you'll be making an ion. That's why we say that something is ionized if it has lost an electron. But back to the nucleus, where things are much harder to change. If you change the number of neutrons, then you get a new neutron count, and a, an atom that has the same number of protons as another atom is called a new isotope. And so I'll make you this little thing here. I'll say like, um, if I have some atom, let's say I've got, I don't know, carbon. Uh, I should probably write a C here. Yeah, if I've got carbon, then I'll write its symbol right there, and what I put down here is Z, and what I put up here is A. How am I gonna get N? Ah, how am I gonna get N? That's your problem, not mine. So in carbon case of like carbon 14 or something, we could write carbon has six protons and it has 14 nucleons. All right, let's keep going. In atomic physics, in nuclear physics rather, it's handy to talk about the unified atomic mass unit, which is one U. There it is, U, me, U, no. Hey, this is 1 12th of carbon 12. Turns out it's like an average mass of a nucleon, but it's not exactly the mass of a nucleon. The strange thing is that all the types of nucleon, nucleons, yeah, I guess so, all possible types of nucleon have mass that's more than the average mass of a nucleon in carbon-12, which means that it must be in a lower energy state. Whoa, did somebody say that carbon-12 is a bound state? Cool, so like you gotta pay the jailer if you wanna get something out of carbon-12? I think that makes sense. I'm saying if you get six protons and six neutrons together, then their total mass will be less than when they're apart from one another. That means that they want to hang out together because I heard that E is mc squared. So if you've got less mass, you've got less energy, which means the protons and neutrons would prefer to be in carbon-12, and they might get there by fusion probably need something really hot like a young star. So check this out. The neutron's mass is more than the proton's mass. Now that's kind of cute. And the difference between them is, well, though not exactly, kind of similar to the mass of an electron. And I'm gonna say, hmm, about that. I'm probably gonna write M's for a long time. The last thing that I wanna do there's a big hmm, right? The last thing I want to do is talk to you about the energy that is in, contained in one atomic mass unit. That's what they used to call it when I was a kid. Now they call them unified atomic mass units, but nobody has time to say that. So call it a mass unit, U. All right, so hey, you, check out E is mc squared. If I plug in one U for my mass, I got to multiply that by c squared. I'm gonna write down, well, first I need to get it into kilograms, right? So I'm gonna write 1.660540. Wow, we got a lot of sig figs here, and it's a good thing because we're gonna be working with small changes in mass, which end up being enormous energies because of that C square right there. I'm going to multiply by 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. So there is one U in kilograms, who me? And then I I'm not gonna be able to say that the speed of light is just three times 10 to the eighth anymore. I gotta go full glory, 2.9. 97792 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. This would give me a square This would give me an answer in joules, but I'm not interested in an answer in joules because it will be still a very small number. 10 to the negative, well, let's estimate it, right? This is 10 to the 16th, so it'll be like 10 to the negative 11th joules. That's not a handy number. Let's go into electron volts, remember how to do that. If we multiply by the number of electron volts that are present in a, uh, I better do it out here. The number of electron volts that are present in a joule, then we will get an answer in electron volts. And that's my plan right here. So I have to multiply by one 
electron volt and divide by the number of joules that's equal to one electron volt, that's 1.6022 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Okay, so now I'm gonna get a number in electron volts, type, 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 pretend type, 931. Five zero 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 comma comma oh my goodness that's nine hundred thirty one point five mega electron volts or million electron volts or as we say in the business MEV yeah that's what we're gonna call it because of course one MEV is ten to the sixth EVs cool so this is the energy contained in one proton, give or take. It might be slightly more, it might be slightly less, but I'm saying it's the energy in one atomic mass unit. Now that's cool, we could actually solve this for mass. You're not going to like this. This makes me a little bit uncomfortable also. Oftentimes, people speak about mass in MeV. What they mean is they're gonna say M is E over C square, and then they're gonna plug in this 931.5 MeV divided by C square, and then they don't say the C square! They just say that mass is 931.5 MeV. So here's what I want to do. I want to <clears throat> I want to tell you that this is never really acceptable. These are units and this is a variable. But we're saying that the mass of a proton or the mass of a neutron on average, it's a little bit smaller because it's a U, right, is 931.5 MeV per C square. And this is our new unit for mass. Whoa. It comes from E as MC squared. So, I hope you like it. We're gonna go a little bit further into nuclear physics soon, but not right now.